Hello, hello, long time no see. This is Kevin again. Uh, today I'm going to show you a few different things with the Barco Event Master Tool Set, specifically uh, external devices, sort of, uh, and then how to work the queue list and the queue features of the Event Master Tool Set. So to get started, uh, I'm going to first build an external device. So with, I think it was version 6.0, I'm not positive. Uh, Barco did add support for controlling external devices within the Event Master Toolset. Uh, so here on the programming, or the configuration page, there are uh, external devices. We do give you automatically uh, Barco projectors, Event Master XML, which is for the Event Master Toolset, and then you can add your own external device. This would be great for Playback Pro, a media server, anything along those lines. To demonstrate this, though, I'm going to show a Barco projector first. So it does create external device one, which I'm going to rename Barco UDX. And if we go to the contextual adjust tab, here are the commands that are given, by the way, shutter close, shutter open, light source off, light source on. If I go to the contextual adjust tab, here's where I'm going to place the IP address of my projector, 192.168.0.101. Uh, port is 9080 and then our protocol, whether TCP, UDP, or HTTP. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we do pre-build a few commands for you. So utilizing uh, JSON here, we have the command for shutter close, yeah, let me move me out of the way. shutter close, shutter open, um, light source off, light source on. Uh, so if you want to add a different one to change an input source, or to do uh, focus or zoom or anything along those lines, then you can just look that up in the user guide of the projector. And then you just add the command here. You just basically hit add new command to device, test the command, store it, bada bing, bada boom. Now, either way, I have a command um, and you wanna then take said command. Uh, so the question then of course is how to do it. You can always select the command, hit test, uh, and that'll fire it out. So this is really great, especially for shutter on, shutter off, power on, power off. But typically you want to control this more seamlessly in your event. Uh, and at this point, that is where queues really come into play. So the queue list is available here on the left-hand side of the Event Master tool set. If I go into the queue list, I have a, well, essentially that. So at the queue list, I have uh, things like destination groups, custom, which is really cool for all trans take. I have my devices and I have presets. So I can use presets, um, custom devices, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the way this works is you first have to add a queue. So you create the queue. Within the queue then, you have to then add an action. You can have, I think it's 12 actions, yes. I can have 12 actions on each queue. However, you can have multiple queues, so. Uh, no worries there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an action and I'm going to have this be my Barco UDX and I'm going to have this be light source on. Uh, at this point, you can have your queue go to another queue, uh, but in this scenario, all I really want is it to be light source on. So I'm going to call this light on. At this point now, I can play my queue, boom. And this sends out the command now to turn the light source on on the projector. On my controller, whether it be an EC50, EC30, EC210, etc., etc., uh, we do of course have the queue list, and now my queues, sure enough, are on my queue list. So I can hit it here. Uh, these are also available on your programming page next to your presets once I start programming some looks and some things. Uh, also, don't forget uh, the flex key allows you to put queues on there as well. So that's one idea of what you can do with a queue. Uh, the other thing, which is kind of fun, is as I mentioned, you can recall presets. So what I'm gonna do really quick is I'm gonna program uh, using single non-mixing layers. I'm gonna program a few quote unquote keyframe looks, and then I'm gonna automate that together. So I'm gonna select my SDI output connector. Yeah, that's an email. And I'm gonna create this as a screen destination, and I'm gonna add a few single non-mixing layers. Uh, this was covered in a different video on the channel. So if you look up all the ways of keyframing, uh, I do cover this uh, workflow within there. But I'm gonna create four single layers. There we go. And I'm gonna create four input sources as well. Add multiple inputs. We'll call it camera one, cam two, Q2, 
cam three, cam four. Great, so I have four sources, four layers. You kind of see where I'm going with this. Go to my programming page, and let me just add some thumbnails here. Let's see, where did I put those? University specialist thumb drive. Here we go now. So camera one, camera two, camera three, camera four. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and add these windows here to one, two, and I'm not going to bother putting these in any particular order or make them clean. This is more just a proof of concept. Great. So I'm going to now store this in preview and I'm going to move all my windows over. Store. I'm going to move all my windows over again. Ideally I'd be using user keys, but hey, good enough. And we'll hit save for preview. All right, cool. So now we hit tips. Great. So I have this dancing action here. However, I want to automate this. I want this just to go forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a queue with multiple actions to take these presets. So watch this. I'm going to go to my queue list. I'm going to call this dance dance revolution because the windows are dancing, get it? <laughs> I'm so funny. And here I'm gonna start adding some actions. Oops, no, I added a queue. I want to add an action. Add an action. So what I wanna do is I wanna create my first action of recalling preset one. I'm gonna set the wait time to be 60 uh, frames. Now I want to take preset one. I want to all trans that. So I want this action to go to the next action. So action one is going to go next to action two. Action two is going to be all trans. That's going to go now to action three. I'm going to set this to be 60 frames as well. And this is now going to go to preset two. That's then going to go to all trans. Now we're going to go to preset three. It's all 60. I'm sure there's a way to highlight all of them. If there is, go ahead and tell me in the comments. And all trans, great. So now I have it recalling each preset and then transitioning. Now here's where we're gonna make it really fun. I want to loop. So what I'm gonna do is on the last action, rather than going next, I'm gonna to tell to go to a specific queue. It's gonna to go to queue number two, which is the dance dance revolution. I'm gonna have it go to action number one. So now I'm gonna play my queue, we'll go to the programming page, and sure enough, this is gonna dance forever and ever and always. It's gonna do this as long as I have this queue playing. To stop the queue, um, I can do that on the queue page on a controller, and I think I can even do it up here as well. Yes, so I can pause the queue, or I can stop the queue. Of course, turn the light on in the projector, and then, of course, play my queue as well. Uh, queues are really fun. The things I have done before is I've taken multiple still stores and uh, created a transition and basically removed the need to have a graphics computer for like a sponsor slide or a sponsor PowerPoint loop or something along those lines. Uh, the other thing that we can then do with queues that I really like to do is internal XML loopback for the Event Master toolset for the actual E2 unit itself. Uh, one thing that you probably know is that in the multi viewer, for example, we can do four multi viewer layouts. However, you've probably noticed that there's nowhere on the controller, uh, there might be on an EC210 actually, but there's nowhere on the controller to change the layout of the multi viewer. So that involves me now having to go into the multi-viewer page every time I want to change the layout, because maybe I want to have my preview, you know, I have my show. So I have, you know, program, preview, and a few sources. But maybe I want to have a different layout that takes one of my sources full screen. Now, if I want to change my layout, that means I have to come here and now actively change it back and forth. We don't like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a queue and we're gonna build a queue that's gonna change the layout between layout one and layout two. Here's where it's gonna get pretty funky, funky, funky. 
So we're going to go back to the configuration page. Uh, we're going to go to external devices and we are going to add an event master XML. I'm going to call this uh, local E2. I'm going to come in here now. And I'm going to put in the IP address of my E2, which is 10.12.100.234. So it's going to be 10.12.100.234. And we're going to stick everything else with the um, port 9876. So it looks like we do give you all trans, which is pretty cool and cut. Uh, but we want to build a queue that does the multi-viewer layout. Now here's where it gets really fun. That's the wrong button. <laughs> if you hit control I, control I and control O, that's going to open up. So that's control I and control O. That's going to open up the incoming and outcoming XML log. This is going to record all the XML that's occurring on the system whenever an action occurs. So what I can do now is I can go to, from layout two to layout one. Change the layout here. And here now is the XML that changes the layout to layout one. So I'm going to copy this parameter here. My computer's not happy. And I'm going to uh, add a new command. And I'm going to call this layout one. My computer is, there it goes, not happy. All right. So now on this uh, command here, I'm going to paste the command that I stole from the XML log. And here it is. I'm going to hit store. I'm now going to add a second one so I can change between layout two. Layout two. And now I'm going to go back to my multi-viewer page. I'm going to hit uh, control O for outgoing XML log. I'm going to change to layout two. Sure enough, here is the XML command for changing layout two. I'm going to hit control C to copy this. I will go back to my configuration page and my light just turned off. Let me just move around. I didn't move enough in my office. All right, so I have layout two. I'm going to select here. I'm going to take this data, override it, control V to paste, and I'm going to store the command, command stored. So theoretically now, I have two commands that each one is going to loop back into the E2 with XML and change between multi-viewer layout one, multi-viewer layout two. Let's test it. So right now I'm on multi-viewer layout two. So I'm going to hit my command, go to my queue list. Actually, I got to build it. I got to build the queue first. So, well, let's test the action first, actually. So we'll do layout one, test the command, and multi-view. Sure enough, that's working. Great. So I'm going to now build a queue. So I'm going to go to my queue list. I'm going to stop this queue. Maybe that'll help my computer. And I'm going to add a queue. I'm going to call this multi-viewer layout one. I'm going to add another one for multi-viewer layout two. Multi-viewer layout one is going to be add action. And that action is going to be device local E2 layout one. Sweet. Uh, multi-viewer layout two, I'm going to add an action. And that action is going to be external device, local E2, layout 2. Sweet. So now at this point, I have my queues. So if I play layout 2, sure enough, we're on layout 2. And if I play layout 1, sure enough, I am on layout number 1. And as before, I can now go to my controller. I can go to my queues. I can hit multi-viewer layout one, multi-viewer layout two. Let me open up a second instance of Event Master Toolset. Just give it a second here. Opening the window, opening the window. And here it is. 
All right, cool. So I have two windows open now. I'm going to open this one up full screen and um, go to my multi-viewer page. I will open up this smaller one. We're going to go to the controller page here. I'm going to try to keep it small so we can actually see this. All right, here's, multi here's the layout page. All right, so now I hit multi-viewer layout one and then multi-viewer layout two. Two, one, two, one. So sweet, that is working great. So those are just a few things you can do with queue lists. Um, I said other popular ones, add a playback pro system, have it then take a preset and then have it also playback the video. Um, very popular as well as if you need to take two presets like back to back almost at the same time. Uh, really handy if you do screen presets and DSM presets. You can have a queue that does one preset all trans and instantly the other one. And that way you can build it out as a queue. Um, hopefully you found that to be fun and interesting. Um, as always, please, if you enjoy the video, uh, subscribe, like all that good stuff, blah, 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 blah. And I'll see you in a future video.